Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. This PEMGAS is going to look at multiplying radicals when we have integers only, just working with whole numbers. Um, what I want you guys to do is think about this tip here, where you simplify the radicals separately first. Here's what I'm talking about. Look at problem number one. Square root of 100 times square root of 3. Some people will jump right in and make that square root of 300, and then they'll try to think about how they could simplify square root of 300, and they're looking for perfect squares. They get right back to where they started from, and they get kind of confused. Well, instead of multiplying those um, things under the square roots, which of course is mathematically valid, try simplifying them first. Square root of 100, we know what that is. That's 10. Square root of 3, don't know what that is, so I'm just going to leave it as 10 root 3. That's what I mean by simplify the separately first. Let's try another one. Square root of 27 times square root of 3. Now, I sure could turn that into the product of 27 and 3, whatever 27 times 3 is. I don't know. It's big. It's a number I'm not very happy with, not very familiar with. So I'm not going to do it that way. What I'm going to do is simplify 27 or square root of 27 and simplify root 3 if possible. Well, simplifying square root of 27, I'm going to make that square root of 9 times square root of 3, and that's times square root of 3 again. Now, square root of 9 here, that's regular old 3. And then root 3 times root 3, that's just regular 3 as well. So my final result there is 9. Let's try another one. Problem number 3 says square root of 75 times square root of 48. Now, I certainly don't know what the product of 75 and 48. I know it's some big number. I don't want to work with it. 75 and 48 are much more approachable, much more friendly numbers. So with square root of 75, I'm going to look for a perfect square factor that goes into it, like 25, so I can make that 5 root 3. Square root of 48, same process. I'm looking for what perfect square number goes into that, like square root of 16. And square root of 16 is regular old 4. Okay, so what I have now is 5 root 3 times 4 root 3. And the way I'll work with that, the way I'll simplify it, is do the 5 times 4 first, that's 20, and then root 3 times root 3, you could think of that as root 9, or just plain old regular 3. My final result there is going to be 60. One last one. Again, 75 times 18, I don't know what that is. I don't even want to calculate it. What I want to do instead is work with these numbers that are not so unfriendly. Right? 75 I know is 25 times 3, so that will become 5 root 3. 18 I know is root 9 times root 2, so that'll be 3 root 2. And when I multiply that, my integer numbers, 5 times 3 is 15. And then when I'm multiplying my square roots, square root of 3 times square root of 2, that's just going to become root 6. So my tip for you guys, or the thing I want you to practice, is simplify these numbers separately first. You could go ahead and find the products, like this one. I, I could have jumped right to the 27 times 3 is 81. I could have done it that way. But oftentimes, if you have a number like this, whatever the heck that is, 75 times 48, I don't want to deal with that number. I'm going to simplify each radical first. That's my tip for you here. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off the airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>